Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to fix the encoding overloaded in OBS. So when you have an encoding overload problem. Now there could be multiple reasons why this happens. But it's mainly because your PC doesn't have enough CPU and or GPU. Or your settings might be too high for your PC. In any case, I'm going to go over as much fixes as possible. So do stay until the end to see if yours is in there. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. And now first of all, something that I want to mention that can play a role is actually update OBS. Now when you actually start up OBS you should have a message that says that you should update to the new version of OBS or remind me later. And basically if you want to do that manually you can go to help here, check for updates. As you can see I have none right here but otherwise you would see update now. You can by the way also if you go to settings right here under updates see update channel stable latest stable release as you can see it's the default and it's recommended and if you want to automatically check for updates on startup of OBS make sure you check this box and click apply and okay. Now why you have to do this sometimes the older versions become a bit less stable so that's why I advised at times to update OBS. Now of course not only OBS but also Windows so if I go to search here and type update you can see it says check for updates and as you can see right here I actually need a update so I'll have to click this when you start now and it'll actually do the, the actual update but do make sure that this is also done because it can actually also play a role and then lastly in terms of updates make sure your drivers are also up to date and if you don't know how to do that i advise you to get a software now i have as you can see right here armory crate you can take any other software if you want but basically if i go down to settings and update center as you can see there's actually one update available here now if there were multiple ones right here i would have actually clicked update all or you can always check for updates if there are none just to be sure that there are really not any of them so as i said if you don't have any software i can advise you to do armory crate for example but once again it's important to also check on your drivers then something else that is very important, if you actually go to, for example, your desktop icon here, click and right click on it, go to properties, advanced, and then you can check here, run as administrator, and then you can click OK. And in case you can also go to the compatibility tab here and go down to run as program and as administrator. So that in the future, if you're going to actually launch up OBS, it will actually automatically run as administrator, which has been proven by the OBS team themselves that it actually increases performance as well. Very important to keep that one in mind. So you click this, apply, and then OK. And so if we're in OBS itself here, the preview zone basically previews what you're currently recording or about to record. What you can do is right click it, enable preview here, as you can see it's checked, but if you click on it, it's not checked anymore. Now I'm still recording recording that's not a problem I can just not see the preview anymore of what I'm recording right now so you guys are obviously still seeing my recording right now but I cannot preview myself what I'm doing but this can actually help it's actually gonna ask less effort for OBS so actually it's gonna be a higher performance I can minimize this and make this run in the background it's a little detail but it can help and then you can click here to enable it again of course and now we actually want to go to the settings we're gonna go over to the output tab here I'm gonna go to the recording tab but keep in mind for streaming it's very similar as you can see up here make sure the output mode is on advanced type standard and basically when I go down to the video encoder, I have it set to an NVIDIA NVENC H264. You can also put it at 265, that can be better, in case you have the NVIDIA option. But what it comes down to is that if you have a good graphics card, make sure that that one is in fact selected. Of course, to have the highest GPU and performance possible in this case. Now, if you don't really have any high-end graphics card, you can also go for the X264 option here. Now, it's not really advised, because you have to be aware of it, because it can actually also provoke the encoding overloaded. Because this will use your CPU a lot, and actually a low CBR could help with that. I'll show you that in a second. And it could also alternatively choose CRF as a rate control and as you can see I actually have a rate control of constant QP here could also be known as CQP but I have this option because I have an Nvidia graphics card and basically mine is set at 17 now the lower the number the better the quality is so it's very important to keep in mind and you can do between 15 and 25 that's the range I would advise you to test so if you think obviously 25 is not enough then you go lower to like 20 or like 18 19 all the way down to 15 I would say which in this case will be the best quality 15 but if that's a bit too high of quality you can go up again to like 17 20 21 you get the idea I've set in the key interval two seconds here and in my case I'm going with a slow but good quality so this is actually very important as you can see if it's fast it's actually going to be a low quality and if it's very slow it's actually going to be best quality but I advise you to have it around the middle here you don't need to go too fast or too slow here I generally advise to keep it at the middle and once again of course test for yourself in case you're using constant QP what the best option would be for you tuning high quality two passes you can keep this at high and B frames is two as I said the other one is CRF and this is the same idea as the constant QP the lower the number the better the quality so same I would advise you to keep it in a range between 15 and 25 and just look for yourself what works best for you test it out in case you're gonna go for CRF which is also a good alternative and then of course a very important one as well CBR now here you're actually gonna have to fill in the number yourself but don't worry I'm gonna give you an idea of what is good and not so I'd say the minimum around the lowest will be like 4000 so I have to type 4000 here I want to go lower than like 2500 or 3000 I think it's really not necessary to go that low so you could consider 4000 around there really the lowest point 7000 would actually be considered median but 10,000 and anything above 10,000 is considered like high so of course OBS is gonna demand 
a bit more resources. So make sure that before putting it at like 10,000 or above, you first check, for example, the low or the medium one. As of course, the CBR has a lot to do with the CPU, just like the X264, which if you use that once again, it's a lot of CPU usage. So you have to really take care of what CBR amount you're going to do. So same key interval, two seconds. Now same here, you want to keep it at the middle. You don't want to go too high or too low. Really keep it around the middle, just in case. You can, of course, test around to go lower or higher, but generally really keep it around the middle, I would say, and test around that. High quality keep it the rest the same now also something that's important that i do want to mention here it is not always the settings of obs it can also be if you're playing a game settings within a game so if for example you're of course going to use the game capture but the settings are too high or maybe even on ultra it might not be actually coming from obs itself the problem but from the game you're running and the fact that you're running it too high for your pc to do the game and simultaneously do recording of obs so do keep in mind it's not always within obs here it can also play a role if whatever you're recording it can be quite demanding that can play a role now then as you can see we're in the video tab here. And as you can see the canvas right here, I have 920 by 1080, aspect ratio of, of 16 by 9. Now the base canvas is your monitor resolution, so it's very important. You should just keep that the same as your monitor resolution. Now I have a 24 inch screen, which is 920 by 1080 pixels. So that's why I keep the base canvas the same. And you also should not touch it, whatever it is in your case, and leave it at that. But then the output scaled resolution, you can actually change. You can put this lower, to, for example, 1280 by 720, or put it all the way up to 4K. This is of course entirely up to you if you feel like your PC can handle that. But make sure that of course, in case you can change the output scale resolution here but maybe a bit lower if you feel like you need to or higher if you're confident it doesn't affect anything the downscale filters i don't see them because i'm having my nvidia graphics card but if you're for example doing x264 you'll be able to see some downscale filters here same i think it wouldn't really affect anything too much but you could test it out see between different filters which one can actually maybe affect your recordings in a way and fps i do think you can just keep that at 60 fps it might be case where you can go down to 30 fps but nowadays you really should not have to especially if you lower the other settings it's not going to be the fps that's going to mess everything up so of course that's allowed to down to 30 if you feel you need to but in most cases you can leave this at 60. now here as you can see in the advanced tab process priority i've set it to above normal here you can set it to high as well it should be a normal for you but if you put it on above normal and then high this actually helps a lot with the process priority to actually give it priority to obs itself within obs and so the higher you put this well the higher the priority is going to be of your recording as well so that's an important one you can also do show active output outputs warning on exit you can also check that one it can be useful and here in video really nothing to change this is probably going to be direct 3d 11 for you as well and v12 here you can set it to as color format color space i do advise to use rec 709 and the color range limited otherwise recording can get pretty dark i don't want that and if you actually go down here under network, this is actually going to affect mostly streamers. So this is going to help for the streamers out there. You can check this box that says dynamically change bitrate to manage congestion, which is still in beta. But you can check that one. And this is actually going to be mostly for streamers, as I said, in case their connection becomes unstable. So to lower the bitrate rather than dropping frames. So it will temporarily lower the quality, but it's better than actually having the lag that comes with it. But that's just something I wanted to mention here. And make sure you check it here. And of course, click apply and OK at the end of every page. Then I'm actually going to go to the taskbar here and right click on it. Go to task manager. You can also do this by doing control alt delete and clicking on task manager. I'm actually going to right click OBS here. What you can do then is go to details. And as you can see, it will highlight where it is within details. What I can do then is right click on it and then set priority. Now it should be on normal or above normal here. And to actually give, once again, OBS a higher priority, you can set this to high or real time as well. This could help a lot with, of course, once again, the performance of OBS, giving a priority to the recording, thus having less problems with getting an encoding overloaded, of course. You can also do the same with a game in question that you're running. You can give, for example, the game like a normal or below normal priority and the app of OBS here. So just the same principle. You can actually put this, as I said, on above, high or real time so that's also a very important step that could help and keep that in mind as well and if you click this once it will actually remember it for the next time you launch up obs so that's also very helpful okay and then i'm going to show you down here in search and type graphic settings here as you can see make sure it's actually a desktop app that we're going to add here so here you want to probably go to your local c disk go to program files go down to obs studio here bin 64 bit and as you can see the obs application itself here now i can either double click this or add it here so when i do this little arrow you can see three options now first of all it's going to be the gpu reference so that's important to distinguish now i've set it to my nvidia geforce graphics cards because obviously i know that gpu my highest performance is going to be my graphics card but if it would have been cpu i could have set this to for example power saving which is in this case it's going to be the nd radian that i have which once again would be more of my cpu so that's also very important now i don't advise you to let windows decide i don't really advise you to basically you can do this for cpu and this on gpu so it also depends what you want to give your pc 
priority for. So high performance, I could advise you to do that. But once again, if you don't really have like a really high end graphics card, you can actually go rather for power saving at times. I do think it's very important to alternate between the two and see which one really works best for you. Optimization for Windows games, it's optional. You can leave this on if you want. And then we can close this. And if you actually go up here, there's a little bonus. It could help, might not. Once again, you have optimization for Windows games here that you can check or not. And if you go to this little arrow, as you can see you have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. It's part of the graphic settings as well. And you can uncheck this, see if it does anything really. But I think in most cases you're easily going to be able to actually just keep this on. It's my fourth a try for you if you really feel like just seeing what it does. Then up here you're actually going to type game mode settings as you can see. This is yet another option, which as you can see, optimize your PC for play by turning things off in the background. Could always help, of course. Now, I don't put anything in the background really when I'm recording, but if you're recording a game and anything is running in the background, or even if you go to this little arrow, as you can see, there are multiple programs that are running in the background here, technically. But in a lot of cases, you might actually also want to have this off. Also something that could help you a lot. Now, what you can also do then, is, for example, if you go to search, what you can also do then is, for example, if you go to search, I'm going to type disk. Cleanup, as you can see right here, you can see it will load this little window right here. Now here you can check whatever files you think aren't really necessary and check them right here. Make sure you know what you're deleting. That's very important. Now you have selected everything that you wanted. It's only useless things, obviously. You can go ahead and click clean up system files. It will actually run as administrator, so you just say yes and it will delete files. But once again, make sure you delete the right things and nothing important. As you can see, if I do it right now, I would gain approximately one gigabyte of space. So it's not really that bad, but it's also not like a lot or anything like that. And you can click OK here. I do advise you after that step to actually go ahead and restart your PC. Now being back here in OBS, I can actually go to help here, log files, view current log here. And as you can see, it's going to give you some info here. Don't worry, it's very basic information about your current recording. And what's interesting, as you can see right here, it says the source desktop audio is lagging over 500,000 ms approximately at max audio buffering. So it can give you also some insight. But basically, if you want to keep this, click on open file. And as you can see right here, it will actually give you a note block. And it will actually give you, if needed, some information. So as you can see, for example, my CPU information here. That's the name of my CPU. Some other features that are on or off. So it's quite an important log. So what you can do then is then do file and save as. If you want to keep this in case and save it somewhere on your computer. But otherwise, you can close this and just click clear right here. And it will clear your entire log helping the performance as well of obs but that's already a more advanced option that's if you're really trying new things at this point once again it's something you have to check out for yourself i would do of course the previous steps first before getting to this point but keep in mind that this is an option as well you can close this i kind of already mentioned it earlier make sure that if you're recording of course of obs make sure that only obs is running and the game in question or anything else that you are recording because anything else would really just be useless and taking over some cpu or gpu in the background slowing down your recording so something simple i wanted to mention here but of course very important to keep in mind so i'm actually going to go into something more hardware related so components in your pc of course invest in an ssd if you can if you still have an hdd hard drive because it can have of course a lot of performance problems for your pc while recording hdd is starting to get a bit more outdated so in case you don't have that upgrade to an ssd of course if you can so change some things up in your computer get some new components maybe if you have like a built pc now within your pc as well no matter if you like a pc or a laptop Check if your PC is clean. What do I mean with that? Of course, mainly dust. Now dust, of course, can slow down your ventilators. Once again, no matter if you have a PC or a laptop, it can actually get stuck in there and slow down the ventilators. Thus also the performance, of course, less CPU. So that's also hardware related. Make sure that you, if it's been a while for your computer, of course, clean it out a bit. Make sure everything is running fine inside of your PC, that there's nothing wrong there, obviously. But everything is running good as well. But in any case, guys, I really try to go over as much possible solutions as possible here. Really, if you have any questions, leave them down below. For the rest, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like really nice. Subscribe to also really nice. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.